My boyfriend Max has a real problem. He's addicted to Indian food. Seriously though, he orders Indian takeout at least once a week. While he does love the Indian dishes I make at home, like my red lentil curry or dal makhani, he often craves the Indian dish he grew up eating the most as a child, chicken tikka masala. And honestly, Max's relationship with chicken tikka masala kind of offends me. Not so much because it's not vegan, but because I thought I was the only saucy Indian snack in his life. Rude. So today I'm making a veganized version of his favorite Indian dish to see if I can finally get him to break up with Indian takeout. You wanna know what I think? Yes, tell the people what you think. That is... Let's start by prepping our tofu. This is extra firm tofu and we need to press it for 20 to 30 minutes to remove the excess water. After years of sleeping on a tofu press, I finally got one. If you look at all that water we're getting rid of, this improves the tofu's texture and enables it to absorb the marinade better. But this recipe requires two blocks of tofu, so I also did the old fashioned pressing method. Wrap it in a towel and weigh it down with something heavy. The reason I chose tofu as our chicken substitute instead of say a vegan mock meat is because I try to use whole foods in my recipes as much as possible. But also the reason Max loves chicken tikka masala in the first place is not because it has chicken in it, but because it has this amazingly flavorful gravy with lots of spices. Plus he also really likes tofu if it's prepared well, of course. Now start tearing the tofu apart into pieces. You could just cut the tofu into cubes like a lot of recipes will tell you to do, but I actually prefer to chunk it off with my hands. Chunk it off, is that a thing you can say? take off chunks with my hands. So you get these irregular surface areas, they're kind of craggy and pocketed, and that means you have more surface area than a standard tofu cube, which means you have more opportunity for the marinade to get into all those nooks and crannies, which of course translates to more flavorful tofu. And while the tofu was being pressed, I made our tofu tikka spice blend. We're gonna start with the whole spices, coriander seeds, cumin seeds, cloves, black peppercorns, green cardamom pods, but just the seeds, cinnamon sticks, and fenugreek leaves, also known as kasuri. And to get the most out of our spices, we're going to dry toast them in a skillet over medium heat. Shake the pan frequently and they need just like three minutes or until the lighter seeds look nice and golden brown. As soon as they're done, take them off the heat so they don't burn or overcook. Once the spices have cooled, it's time to grind them up. I use my trusty electric spice grinder, which is one of my favorite kitchen gadgets, but you could also do this with a mortar and pestle. It smells so good. You could use ground spices, pre-ground spices instead if you want to skip this step and there's instructions for that in the blog post, but I really think it's useful to use your own whole spices and to toast them because when you do that, you release all the volatile oils in the spice. That is where the essence of the spice lives. So you're gonna get a lot more flavor. And that is also how you build those complex layers that you love about really good Indian food. Now a few ground spices to complete our tikka spice blend. Turmeric, paprika, ginger, Indian red chili powder, and freshly grated nutmeg. Making your own spice blend takes less than 10 minutes and the results are so worth it. The spice blend is gonna go into our tofu marinade. First, we need some plant-based yogurt. I'm measuring it out using my scale and there are measurements in both cups and grams in the blog post. I recommend a thick variety of yogurt like this Greek style almond one or creamy coconut yogurt. And we'll add our spice blend, a few cloves of freshly grated garlic, freshly grated ginger, no need to peel it, lemon juice, which is gonna enhance the tanginess of the yogurt, yogurt, a bit of oil, any neutral flavor works, and of course, some kosher salt to season. Whisk it all together and the look at how beautiful this marinade is. We're preparing the tofu similarly to how you'd make chicken tikka, coating it in a super flavorful marinade made of freshly ground spices and high fat yogurt. Get in there with your hands, but be as gentle as possible to avoid breaking the tofu up too much. And the tofu is gonna do its marination thing in the fridge for two hours, but you can let it hang out for eight hours if you want. So while our tofu is in the fridge marinating, we're gonna get started on our masala, which is basically the gravy or the sauce, super flavorful, really well spiced, and you can also make it a day or two in advance if you wanna save some time. We've got red onions, garlic, fresh ginger, and green chili peppers, which is basically the holy quaternity of Indian cooking. You're gonna layer that with some whole and ground spices, as well as fresh tomatoes and cilantro. And so even though you're not gonna find tofu tikka masala anywhere in India. We are using classical Indian cooking techniques, so the dish ends up tasting, at least to me, very authentically Indian. For the onions, you want to dice them really finely so that they almost melt into the background instead of staying as distinct pieces. Mince six cloves of garlic and about an inch and a half of fresh ginger and dice a serrano pepper. If you have what we call baby mouth, take out the seeds or use a milder jalapeno pepper. I'm dicing a pound of fresh tomatoes here. This is going to bring a tangy, subtle sweetness to the masala and a handful of fresh cilantro. So oftentimes people just use the leaves on cilantro, but the stems, not only are they edible, they actually have even more concentrated 
kind of sweet, floral, grassy flavor that cilantro has. So we're going to cook down the stems in the masala to add more flavor, and then we'll garnish it at the end with the leaves. Get a 12 inch saute pan over medium high heat, add your oil, and once it's hot, a tablespoon of cumin seeds. Earlier, we dry toasted cumin seeds for our spice blend, and now we're toasting them in oil, which is called blooming. After a minute, add in your dried red chili peppers. They need just 30 seconds, and if you don't have them, you can skip them and just add a bit more chili powder later on. In go the onions, toss those from time to time, until they start to brown, about six to eight minutes. If they start to brown too quickly on the edges, add a splash or two of water to prevent them from burning. For our next layer of flavor, we've got that mixture of garlic, ginger, and serrano peppers, and some ground turmeric. I learned from my mom that turmeric takes a bit longer to cook than other ground spices, so I'm adding it now before the other spices. After a minute or so, add the ground coriander and Indian red chili powder and tomato paste. Stir that really well to coat everything. It only needs 30 to 60 seconds. The tomato paste is optional, but I think it boosts the tomatoey flavor, so I like it. Speaking of tomatoes, add in your diced tomatoes and all of their juices. Cook these down for a few minutes until they start to soften. Now it's time for the cilantro stems, a few tablespoons of water, and seasoned with salt. There are so many different kinds of Indian dishes, obviously, but this process of folding in different spices and aromatics in successive layers is one big key to super flavorful Indian food. Let this hang out at a simmer with the pan covered for 15 minutes and give it a stir a couple times. This is what our masala looks like after 15 15 minutes, scoop out those dried peppers, and to give it the quintessential creaminess that everyone loves about tikka masala, but in a plant-based way, I'm adding one can of coconut milk. For some big, bold flavor, we've got a tablespoon of garam masala and two tablespoons of fenugreek leaves. I crush those with my hand before adding them to release even more flavor. And a tablespoon of vegan butter for that extra richness, and just let that combine and heat through. If you could smell this right now, you would be in heaven. Indian food heaven. While the masala was cooking, I got started on our tofu tikka. You need a large skillet, cast iron works best here. Add it to the second rack in your oven and preheat it to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Once that skillet is smoking, take it out, don't forget the oven mitts, and add a thin layer of oil to the bottom of the pan. Start adding in handfuls of the marinated tofu. The pan's gonna be pretty packed with the tofu, but that's okay. The hot pan is going to help cook the tofu from the bottom, and then you're gonna turn on your broiler and stick the pan underneath the heat source. That's going to charge the tofu a bit on top and give it a lot of interesting texture. After 10 to 12 minutes underneath the broiler, this is what our tofu tikka looks like. It's got some nice char on the top and as you can see, it looks really chewy on the inside. Let's scoop this tofu tikka into our masala now. The marinated and charred tofu is gonna give this creamy gravy some dimension and texture and extra flavor that you wouldn't get if you just added plain tofu to the masala. That said, if you wanna make this a weeknight meal, you could do that and I've included instructions in the blog post. Y'all, this smells so good. It smells like an Indian restaurant inside of my kitchen. So to finish this dish, we're just going to toss the tofu in the masala, get it nicely coated, add some lemon juice, and if it tastes a little too tangy for you, go ahead and add a pinch of sugar. I'm gonna add some thinly sliced green chilies because I like it spicy, but if you don't, feel free to omit. And finally, those chopped cilantro leaves from earlier. All right, let's scoop some of this luscious tofu tikka masala up, serve it over some basmati rice or any kind of rice you like, a little extra cilantro on top. And if you're going for a gourmet Indian restaurant style feast, serve it alongside my vegan naan instead of rice or with rice, you do you. Moment of truth. I know what I think about this dish. It's so good. But the real test is, does it satisfy my boyfriend's Indian takeout food cravings? Let's go find out. All right, come on over. Presenting Max. Most of you probably know Max. He is my partner. He's also the cameraman, the operations genius behind Rainbow Plant Life, and a fantastic taste tester, I would say. That's actually no, it's not true at all. Absolutely not true. Every time I make something, it's either, oh, this is nice, or this is really nice. Not a lot of variation, so I take that back. You wanna know what I think? Yes, tell the people what you think. That is sensationally good. Sensationally good, <laughs> sensationally good. Okay, tell us more, sir. It's got a lovely heat to it. It's not, not too much, it doesn't overwhelm the flavors. Would, hey, it be too, this is mine. would it be too spicy for people watching at home? I think for the baby mouse out there, for sure. Like you kinda occasionally get some of like the charred bits and that is uh, always lovely. It's creamy, it's got the a little bit of tang from the yogurt. There's um, no yogurt. Is there, there's yogurt in the... Oh, there's yogurt. Yeah, you know my recipe better than me. There is yogurt. 
Would you say this is better than your favorite takeout, your standard order, your chicken tikka masala? Oh yeah, this is way, way better. I don't think they're not gonna go through the same steps. I would just say if you're at all interested in this recipe, if you think it might be at all appealing to you, just stop what you're doing and go out and get the ingredients and make it as soon as possible. It is that good. This is a showstopper. Yay! And we'll see you guys later. Bye! Bye!